And now, another person from Worcester who has already been introduced, and uh, uh, we grew up in that town, and uh, Morden Bells, I welcome you to come and speak to us. I've made some notes, uh, because I always think it's a little bit better to have some structure, and I'm a writer rather than a speaker. Uh, I was going to start by talking about the Worcester Boys. Um, as has been said before, there are some quite famous uh, refugees from Worcester. Uh, J.M. Kutsir perhaps being the most internationally known. In our town we boasted having the founder directors of both Old Mutual, it was N.C. Kroner, they, they represented the supper, and Sunlong, Pierre Armelon. We had the painter Huguenot D, and of course it was the home of my father Jean Belts for 25 years. John and I grew up in the newer, lower middle class suburb of Langerach. I say newer in terms of like 1950. Not much by way of gardens, because the hillside on which it was built had been stripped of topsoil for gravel for building the N1 highway. Water was always a problem, except for the water that comes off its mountains that are snow covered in winter. Worcester is Little Karoo semi-desert. <coughs> There's a harshness in the light, an enormous sky. It is a town of small-time shopkeepers, country doctors, dentists, lawyers, school teachers that serve a large rural area. The Kramers and the Velses, amongst a few other families, were Yuekis at school. It meant nothing more than that, that, that we spoke English. <laughs> we were marginals, but well tolerated. The whole town has or had a sense of marginality, survival against the odds, a sense of fighting the good fight of life. It had an association of arts that battled against the odds, a music <coughs> society, an art school, a rock band, thanks to Kramer amongst others and the fire chief's son, Hanisek. <coughs> That sensibility comes through John Cramer's art. You might even find something of its somewhat depressive, a somewhat depressive form in J.M. Kutsia's work. I believe you will even find it in Nosewee. <coughs> um, in recent times, I've had to go through some of my father's old papers, and I found amongst them a letter from N. P. van Veek Lo. Uh, he'd been asked to open one of my father's <coughs> exhibitions, and this was a polite refusal. And his explanation was, he had witnessed, witnessed so much embarrassing nonsense said by the ignorant of art at openings, that he did not dare associate himself with the practice. <laughs> <coughs> I have to admit I know little or nothing about the theory or philosophy of art, but I have served a serious apprenticeship in looking at art. I spent all my formative years looking at art and how it was created. I was confronted with, <coughs> confronted with a painting. I was frequently required to answer these questions. What do you see? Look again. What don't you see? What do you feel? Today, I repeat the exercise with you. <clears throat> look, what do you see? What do you see? And then look again. What don't you see? And it's like the dog that didn't bark at night. <laughs> what don't you see? What do you feel? Some of the answers. For a start, what you don't see is no people. Yet these pictures are still alive. There are other practitioners of the art of painting uh, houses, buildings, street scenes, that have a sort of an ominous two-dimensionality, a, a deadness, a very apparent two-dimensionality. Not with John Cramer's work. These paintings, all of them, despite the absence of people, there is a presence of people. They're not there, but they are there. These are living scenes. There's a sense 
And that's the skill of the painter. There's the light, the light, the amazing light in these pictures. The sense that it's an actual moment in time. Note, you will see shadows that suggest a time of day. It's a particular moment at a particular time. It's a real shop at a real time. The perspective is terribly important. The bare, hot road. Here and there, a glimpse of an extended landscape, just around the corner, somewhere. And a fairly bare and depleted one. What we have in these pictures is the immediacy of a relationship between the viewer and the place. You are the person in the picture. You are standing on the other side of the road, <coughs> looking at that scene. And you are standing on a particular spot. You will note you're looking at it from a particular vantage point, straight across the road, slightly down the road, round the corner. I know some of these scenes, and they evoke nostalgia, but they are definitely not sentimental. There is a frequent failure of other artists <coughs> of this type of picture, if you like. What they celebrate, ironically, maybe, if you think they all have a similar type of scene, is individuality, ordinariness, no, a lack of ostentation. These are not renaissance or gothic cathedrals, not a magnificent creation of God or nature. These are ordinary human beings' habitation, their little shop, Wimsali Savinkel, the Kefi, the Bioscope. This is indigenous art, real indigenous art, with a truly remarkable skill and aesthetic sensibility. I invite you again to look at some of the pictures. And I made some notes as I came here because I wasn't sure whether they would be on this exhibition or not. But you will see, for instance, a garage in Marisburg, <laughs> far room. The garage in Marisburg is certainly not an object of beauty. It is, in fact, quite brutal. And yet it has that intimacy, the small split. We belong in that environment. Uh, there are some pictures that have a sort of a, the you know, has they sort of have the endearment of familiarity. The thought phrase crossed my mind, little like an old marriage. The yo-yo supermarket in the Devetsdorp is an example of those. There's another, well, several of them, have this sort of peep down the street with just a suggestion of a, a rather heat-blown blue gum tree. The blind in Grahamstown is a blind. And what does it tell you? Is this this battle against heat, against intense sun. So the picture is intense sunlight. But you're looking at a blind creating a shade behind it for somebody who's looking for cooth in the heat. Occasionally, there's some that are unashamedly charming, like the veranda picture. But it's only charming because the bloody cottage is so bloody charming. <laughs> so, I, I think that's pretty well what I wanted to say, except for a last picture. And that's the 20th century bioscope. Mm. <clears throat> now, we frequented in Worcester, we had the Scala bioscope on High Street. And I have to tell you, for those who've escaped going into Worcester on your way to more interesting places. <laughs> uh, Worcester was once a most extraordinarily beautiful and charming little Karoo type early Victorian town with small cottages um, of great simplicity and great beauty. A pretty pr impressive uh, Mutterkerk, uh, a fantastic Georgian um, Landros uh, Dos Day, and thrown over it from about 1940 onwards with big doses of Goodwood and Paro and Furtekaro. 
And I'm afraid over the last three or four or five decades, they've got the better of it. But there are remnants of that older town, and it just makes the heartbreak worse. But in any case, uh, the 20th century, we had Van Fielen's Kefi. Kefi. We had the, the Afrikaanse coffee ice, very Afrikaanse coffee ice. Uh, Van Fielen's was much more adventurous in an American style milk bar. He loved the movies, clearly, and there, was, there were rumors that he was a communist. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, that 20th century movie house, and I think here we are in dry, hot Worcester. We all know one another. We have an extraordinary tolerance, believe it or not, of variations in class, although the variations were not that great, of religion, of language. We had quite a big minority French community that worked at the textile mills, an Italian community, and everybody was absorbed into Worcester Ruhr Jungen's school. And our teachers taught us all with equal devotion and maybe a bit of ignorance. <laughs> but in any case, um, when you went to the 20th century movie house, you escaped into this Hollywood dream works. It was amazing, an amazing experience. So something which just watching TV at home doesn't quite recreate. But when I look at that picture, I think of um, Movies like High Society and The Great Escape or, or Capture Catch a Thief. And as I say, just coming out from that hot, rather beaten street, through that door in the darkness, and everybody smoking into a haze. <laughs> <laughs> and then that fantastic world coming to life on the screen. That's what I think, in a way, we all, because we're South Africans, we look at these scenes and they pull at our souls, where there's something of us in there. That's where we come from. That's us. And I really want to compliment John. Um, you are a great painter, and you've done great things for us. <laughs> I only suppose it remains for me to say this exhibition is now formally open. <laughs>